Hi everyone, big day today because we're out and about. <laughs> uh, Margot is three weeks and two days old and we barely left the house. Oh, we've been going for like walks and stuff around our area. The thing about having a baby is the first two weeks you're like, oh my God, what is going on? And you're trying to sort of like just get by. But then by like week three, Sarah and I found ourselves like a little bit bored because she sleeps a lot, but you can't do a great deal because she wakes up then and then you have to sort of like act accordingly, change nappies, feed her, kind of your whole world stops. So we're going for walks around our area, but we haven't gone any further because suddenly there's like some sort of catastrophe, like she'll do a massive poo or something. So it's been easier just to stay home, but it's been a bit boring. So what we've done, we've got in the car and we've come to visit um, Sarah's mum, Jackie, who's there. So we've just come to um, Sire and Sester. We thought this way would be actually the best of both worlds in that Sarah and I and Margot can get out of the house and sort of do some stuff. But we know that we've got an extra kind of ally on hand. So if things do get real, if she does do like a massive poo in public or something like that, um, we've got help. It actually feels really good and really refreshing just to get out of the house. We've had like massive cabin fever. And also I want her to kind of like experience things. And I know she's only like a little tiny thing right now and doesn't really know what's going on, but I wanted to sort of see new things and smell new smells and all that, you know? Now, we didn't bring the pushchair with us. We just put the sling, just kind of trying to travel light. I love this sling. The thing is when you're eating, it's really tricky not to drop food on your child's head. So I've got scrambled egg on toast now, right? And you, you, even if you lean forward, you still kind of have the baby's head right below your mouth. So. It would be cruel to replace a napkin on top of it. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can hear this. It's going to go out of focus. I just want to see if you can pick up on uh, Margot's happy little grunt noises. She sounds like a little dinosaur. I'm coming in close. I don't know if you heard that, but it's like the best sound in the world. She does that when she's sort of like asleep and content, or when she's like feeding and happy, she sort of goes, <clears throat> In the bath. Uh, oh, she oh, loves the bath. The bath. She yeah. lays back and goes. <sighs> <laughs> this place, by the way, is called Mead in Siren Sister. And it is amazing. You might get a cinnamon bun. What is this one? Jack, I think I want that one. <laughs> They're not for me. We can't go past the pastry shop without you getting some. Jackie, I want one of these ones, please. Sarah's granddad has just arrived. Um, so I'm taking this moment while everybody is like sort of bonding to escape for a bit and do some tidying and some laundry and stuff. Um, Sarah's granddad, bless him, has been so excited to meet Margot, but he lives, oh, I can't remember where he lives now. He was in Devon or he's just moved to Devon. He moved recently. He's either come or come from or gone to Devon. I can't remember. But anyway, it's a really long journey to get to London, um, but actually an easier journey for him to get to the Cotswolds. Um, so he has, on, we went out for breakfast <laughs> and he got in the car and we said, oh, we'll, we'll meet you at midday. Come, come here at midday. He was here at 11 o'clock because he'd been so excited um, and he's totally in love with her. But while they're all down there doing their thing, I thought I would come up and, and do some organizing. But I thought what also might be quite cool would be to show you kind of like the essentials that we've used for bringing Margot with us. Now, Sarah and I are desperate to not be those parents that one, don't do anything because the baby sort of prevents you from doing so, but also to bring everything with you because it's just really inconvenient and it's not very streamlined. So we've actually kind of pictured our stay here as almost like a long walk that we'd normally do just with the, the cop that we've had to bring with us. Um, and actually, I feel really good about the stuff that we've bought. We didn't even bring the push chair. Um, we actually opted for the sling just because it's less stuff to put in the, in the boot of the car. And we're not really going long distances or anything. We're only going for like short walks and stuff. Plus I really like this thing because it's a big cuddle. Anyway, so I thought I'd show you what we've bought with us. Um, there are a few things in the laundry, like there's um, a couple of outfits that she's puked on. So there are more clothes than I'm about to show you, but otherwise let's begin. Now, this one here is Sarah's um, baby bag. I have my own backpack, um, but there's no point bringing them both. So in here we have two muslins. There is a third muslin downstairs as well. You cannot have enough muslin cloths <laughs> if you've got a baby because they're constantly dribbling or they're puking or they're just all sorts of like catastrophes that you need them for. So you need a bunch of these. We've got two here and then one more downstairs that's currently being used. We also have these nappies. Now, at home, we are using reusable nappies because if you know me, if you watch my content, I'm a bit of an eco-warrior and I'm trying to 
reduce um, waste, but also just reduce our impact, and also reduce Margot's impact on her behalf. I'm hoping that when she gets old enough, she'll be make her own conscious decisions, but I don't want her to already be kind of contributing to loads and loads of waste. So um, we've got these uh, biodegradable nappies for when we travel. Um, there's loads on the market actually. There's, to be honest, there's not really much excuse to not use them, um, in my opinion. We have here, these ones are from um, Kit and Kin and they have uh, little faces on them. Um, and they're really, really great. She got some really well of them. We have others actually. We've got about three or four different brands um, that we like of the biodegradable ones, but these happen to be the ones that are packed in the in the travel bag. Uh, we also have in here, this travel bag comes really handily with a little um, changing mat, like so. Um, and then in here we have spare outfit, we've got some wipes in here. What we do have is um, some formula. Now Margot is breastfed, I would say about 95% of the time, but it's handy um, to be flexible. And in fact, the midwife even said that to her. She said, if you can be flexible and do some breastfeeding and some formula, that works really well. We have a slight issue in that all of the powdered formula we've tried with Margot, she brings back up straight away. I don't know if she's like allergic or maybe it's too rich for her or something, but she can't keep it down. So irritatingly, what she does like a lot actually, a little, um, pots like this, but of course that's not ideal because it's single-use plastic. Now, I'm obviously going to prioritise my daughter over any amount of plastic because that's what has to happen, but any parents out there, do you know a better way? This actually is also too small, uh, that's 90 mil, and she'll go through that, plus she usually drinks about 110, 120 mil in a serving, and we don't use them very much. Sarah is mostly breastfeeding, but there are times where Sarah has breastfed and also pumped um, in order to kind of give me enough uh, bottles but then she's empty and the baby needs more and like there's just not enough milk going around so we have had to use a few of them plus it just is flexible like if we're out and about um, on the move in the back of the car for example she needed feeding and Sarah can't get her boob out while I'm driving on the motorway so we had to use one of the bottles is there a better way like parents do you know there's a way that we can use the same stuff that is sort of ready made that she can keep down, but that doesn't require so much single use plastic. Anyway, um, the other thing we bought is the sling here. I love this thing because basically it's just like a, a constant cuddle. This is adjustable, um, it's from Artie Pop. Um, it's adjustable, so at the moment we've got it on sort of like newborn mode, but actually as she gets bigger you can sort of adjust the straps, move things around, and it will see you through for quite some time. And as she gets much bigger you can then turn it into like a backpack, so she can sort of sit on my back, which is quite cute. And then the only other thing we've bought, which for me is a really brilliant gizmo gadget, I'm not sure what you'd call it, is this cot here. Now this is from Mamas and Papas, um, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's called the Lua. So firstly what's really handy about it is that it's really portable. So there's no nuts and bolts and screws or anything like that. Everything just slots and clicks in. And because of that, it also comes with a really handy um, carry bag. So you can sort of dismantle everything, put it in the car like we did. You get it back out of the car. You can assemble this in about three minutes. It's so easy, but also sturdy and really practical. So you can see here the sides, I've got it on the, the highest height because we've got it in bedside mode. But actually here you've got these um, sliders and underneath there's a button here. You push the button on both sides and you can drop down from six to one. So you can have it higher or lower depending on whether you're by the bed or you're by your sofa or wherever you may be. It also, underneath here, where do I show you? Should I come from this side? Underneath here has like, storage. So here it comes with a changing mat, which is very handy. Um, in fact, we now know to never change Margot without a changing mat because as soon as you take her nappy off, she will just wee everywhere. And it's gone all over the rug, it's gone all over my legs, it's gone everywhere. So a changing mat is a must. And having that built in to the, um, to the, the crib here, it's really handy. This is the travel um, bag that comes with it. You then got all this shelf space here for you know your nappies and your wipes and your muslins and all that stuff. Um, and then here, 
We have a super breathable mattress and also very easy just to pull off the uh, the cover here and stick it in the wash. In fact, one of them is already in the wash from last night where she puked. Um, all of the fabric as well, you just undo a zip like this or like this. You can take it all off and put it in the wash, which I cannot tell you. <laughs> when, when we started like looking at things to buy, I was like, do you really need to wash it that much? You really do. Like everything just gets covered in something. And it's not something nice. It's some sort of bodily fluid that will come out of your child and go on anything that's fabric. So I kind of think that I'm never buying anything for the baby that you can't remove and wash. Uh, this is also very, very cool. Really practical idea here, right? Is that you can just use this clip like that and that bit drops down so if you're having it as a bedside crib um, and you're sort of like laying next to her uh, like this and you need to reach in you can literally just go oh no Margot you okay push that down and you have access but also sometimes it's pretty tricky to pick up a baby from um, a crib because you have to come from like directly above it's kind of hard to show you this on camera, but by dropping the sides down, you can then get your hand underneath her much quicker and scoop her up. I wonder if I can show you that. <laughs> I probably can't, but you sort of can use your forearm to push this down and then sneak your hand under her and pick her up that way. And actually makes a big difference. And then simply to secure it, you just lift it up and push that down again. And the whole thing that is, is sturdy again, you know? I've had to put you on the floor because I need two hands to show you this next bit. Now. This actually is what separated this bedside crib to a lot of the other ones that we looked at. Because having a bedside crib, obviously it lives by your bedside and that's great and everything. But actually if you leave the room um, and your baby's asleep in the crib and you don't want to disturb your baby by kind of going backwards and forwards constantly, you either have to pick her up and take her into the next room with you and find another solution of where to sleep them if, if they haven't woken up by you moving them, or you stay in the room and do nothing. <laughs> and the thing is, if your baby's asleep in a different room, you're constantly worrying. If you hear a sniff or a grunt, you go sprinting in there. But equally, if they're quiet for more than 20 minutes, you'll go, oh my God, I've not heard anything. So you're never focused on actually doing whatever it is you're doing. So with this one, literally push this button underneath here and this button underneath here, and it comes out and you can take it around the house with you. That's brilliant, right? So Sarah and I have got into the habit of putting this in the living room with us when she's asleep and just sort of watching TV or doing whatever it is we're doing. I've had her in the kitchen with me a few times while I'm doing the laundry or the washing or whatever. Margot's safe and sound in here, but I haven't had to find like seven other alternatives to, of where to put my baby while she's napping. She just goes in this and this comes around with us. It's great. Tennis, play. She is Tennis, out like a light. Sir. Two or three of the ladies, so God, she's cute, isn't she? Um, look how cute this is. Patrick, Sarah's uh, brother, bought Margot her first Liverpool kit. Now, if you don't know <laughs> about the people in this household, they are massive fans of the Reds. So we've got a Liverpool kit and on the back. It says Margot number one, which is super cute. It's far too big. I think it's like six months, but in six months time, hopefully, the Reds will be top of the league so she can wear it <laughs> like a real champion. Do you know what's really excellent news? Um, it's now, what, 5.30, Sarah, is it? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, 5.38, and I forgot we got pastry earlier. Everyone else has eaten theirs, and mine is still waiting. And I've got a coffee. I'm not going to eat the whole thing because that's massive. And actually, I'm we've really got... sad that I ate mine. Oh, you, oh, you can share mine. That's no, all right. It's dinner soon. Actually, we've got Sarah's brother and sister-in-law and their three kids coming in a minute, so I'm going to eat that before they get here, otherwise I'll have to share it oh, with yeah, them. Oh yeah, the six-year-old will want that, <laughs> eat that quick. I don't mind sharing it with you, but I know if she comes, she's going to want all of it and I won't get any. This is all right, you know, I'm full of pastry, I've had a coffee, I'm watching YouTube videos on my laptop. Margot's just down there chilling, um, and I think... Yeah, I can hear how the kids have arrived. <laughs> well, that was absolute carnage. George is the youngest, he's what, four months, Sarah? Yes. Um, then there is, um, Olivia is six and Sophia is two. Two. Uh, obviously they all wanted to see Margot, um, which is lovely, but they prodded and they poked. Margot actually dealt with like a real champ, but... No, they were really good. No, they were, they were absolutely lovely. Olivia was stroking her hair. Suddenly the sweet. house was... Oh no! Suddenly the house was so noisy that, all right, baby. Maybe daddy's being too noisy. Suddenly the house was so noisy. Absolute carnage. I mean, the best kind of carnage. 
if you got a big family, it was like Christmas yeah. Day where it was like Christmas. We had I did you didn't do bath time. No, yeah, you did bath time with, with the other I kids. I mean, I'm on. Uh, I'm still like recovering from an episiotomy and yeah. tearing, and they were like, pick me up, <laughs> do the bath time, and I don't know. If you've got family. You love your kids so much. You can't. I can't say no to my six-year-old niece that's like please bath me yeah but they left and i was like oh my god my bits hurt from, <laughs> oh no. from standing up and holding everyone while sarah was doing bath time jackie and i were feeding respective children i had my child and was feeding jackie had george who is their youngest and was feeding so sarah had the two kids doing bath time it was just mayhem the best kind of mayhem but <laughs> i am now exhausted Good thing is, though, um, as I mentioned earlier, this family are big fans of Liverpool. Liverpool are on the TV. They are currently 1-0 up against Porto. It's half-time. Are um, they 2-0? Oh, 2-0 up. Yeah, they are 2-0 up. Yes, they are. Um, Show how much I pay attention. And Margo, Patrick and I sing? are having a beer while we watch it. Can you sing, we love you, Liverpool. We do. I think she's a bit young for the songs. We love you, Liverpool. We do. <laughs> she hasn't we got love a Liverpool. We do. <laughs> oh, Liverpool. We love you. I'm hey, going to end hey. this video here because uh, I'm actually enjoying my evening and I'm really tired now. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, see you very soon. Goodbye.